Hello and welcome to the Sandbox Daily with me, John Jordan. And our uh, news today is uh, interesting. So um, the Sandbox has done a deal with CoinCheck. So CoinCheck is the, apparently, I've never heard of it, is the number one uh, crypto exchange in Japan. Um, and uh, CoinCheck have acquired this area um, of land in the Sandbox. And they are going to be... Um, taking uh, that and selling it to uh, Japanese uh, crypto owners. Um, we have a quick look at uh, the medium. Um, so one of the interesting things about Japan is, um, although it's pretty crypto um, kind of uh, friendly in terms of consumers, consumers have been kind of involved in crypto there for a long time, um, there is quite a lot of uh, domestic legislation around it. So um, all, so lots of Japanese people like buying things like Bitcoin, uh, but there are lots of um, laws around um, what sort of crypto blockchain things you can do there. It's quite a highly regulated country um, and uh, compared to the West has, has what we would consider some quite odd laws um, around things like gambling. So gambling is, is illegal in Japan, um, for example. Um, so, so obviously, um, up, you know, up to this point, the sandbox has been selling off its land. Um, it's sold about, you know, getting on for um, 40, for over 40 percent of its land has been sold now. And I'm sure there are some Japanese people have have bought in the general land sales. Um, whether they can do that legally or not, I don't. I don't know. I and mean, obviously, on the blockchain, sort of, you can <laughs> you can do what you like. Um, and obviously, people don't have to be uh, KYC to know. Um, so, Sandbox doesn't need to know who they are or where they're from um, in order to get involved in land sales. Although it may have a legal disclaimer um, saying you, you can't buy this if you're in certain countries. Um, there's no way of enforcing that. Um, so, but what's interesting about this is 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 this clearly um, is a um, sort of a legal um, opportunity for Japanese people. Um, to buy the sandbox in a more in a regulatory way, um, in a way that's going to be you know obviously going to be marketed to them. So, CoinCheck obviously has loads of Japanese crypto users. Um, they may not uh, up, up to this point have been know about the sandbox, um, uh, and they may not have um, you know them having now being told about it. They may want to get involved. Obviously, at the moment there's no land sale going on, um, but this now is going to be looks like it's going to be. Um, you know, there's going to be a land sale just for Japanese people, probably through the CoinCheck um, uh, centralized exchange, I would imagine. I'm not quite sure how they would do that. Um, but I'm sure there are ways um, in which they can kind of, mar particularly marketing this to Japanese uh, crypto um, consumers. And obviously, Japan has a great history of, of gaming as well. Um, so I don't think we need to, we can just quickly go through this. Um, so one interesting thing here is, is when companies get land. So we can see here there's a big CoinCheck area. Um, that looks like a 24 by 24 um, size uh, land. So, so as well as just selling on the land, CoinCheck is going to be um, building, um, building out its own uh, what they're calling uh, Japanese. Uh, here we go. Coin CoinCheck will create new Japanese focused content um, in in the, in its own land. And actually, they do say here they're going to CoinCheck is going to be launching an NFT marketplace. Um, so that's how it's going to sell its land. Um, so presumably um, they're not going to allow you to do that um, in a decentralized manner. You'll have to be having a, a coin check account, um, so they can. So because they will KYC you, they will know um, where you come from. So presumably this is just going to be for people in Japan, I would think. Um, but it is interesting that it's, in a sense it goes a little bit against the kind of the, the um, decentralized kind of gaming sort of thing that anyone around the world can get involved in this sort of stuff. Obviously legislation is still um, with us. And even applies to the blockchain. Um, so uh, this is a way of kind of building uh, this, uh, the, you know, the strength of the sandbox um, into particular markets. We may we may see other um, similar sort of deals. I mean, previously we've seen the sandbox do deals with Binance, which is sort of a global company, although kind of was originally based in China, now based um, um, not sure if it's Hong Kong. I think probably Singapore, um, formerly, or maybe Bermuda or something like that. But uh, um, it has a strong kind of Asian uh, kind of uh, user base. And so we are kind of starting to see these centralized exchanges getting involved in the NFTs, which is in itself is pretty interesting. Um, um, so yeah, 2.2, 2.25 million users uh, in Japan. <clears throat> and it is the first exchange to secure the Japanese Financial Services Agency criteria for licensing. Um, so their marketplace will, um, won't be a free for all. Um, it will be curated from companies who are, have, uh, are reputable. Um, let's have a quick look at where it is in the sandbox. So let's go to our famous map of the sandbox. Let's wait for this to load. And we can actually see 
um, where this area is. So this is this here is the area that just sold. This is the coin market cap area. And if we kind of go down, this will take a bit of a time to load for some reason. I don't quite know why. Um, we can see all the different areas that have been sold. So the, all, this, all this in green is all the land in the sandbox that has been sold to date. And this can obviously be, um, if people want to sell this, this can be traded. So if you look on OpenSea, you'll, this is the land you'll see, the green land. And we can see this little area here, um, which is not actually um, gonna, uh, which is not um, in, in, a, in a color um, because it's not, um, <laughs> it's not been sold yet. But this here, um, if we flick back um, here, we can see this is this is the area here, the coin check area, and it's between a Binance area of land here and, and two sandbox areas here. So we know this is a little bit here. So this is this is the, some of the land that Binance, the centralized exchange, owns. We're not quite sure what they're doing with that. Um, I think they're going to be giving some of it away. Um, but here we have this area of land is now um, reserved for uh, for Japanese gamers, uh, and that will go through its own sale process. That, um, you know, won't be won't be a land sale. Um, as the sandbox does, it's quite a big area actually. I wonder, I can't be bothered to count all those, um, count everything up. Um, but so, uh, I mean, that was up here. This was one thousand two hundred. That looks to be broadly the same. It could be like another one thousand, one thousand, one thousand two hundred um, plots of plots of land going there. So certainly things are accelerating for the sandbox, um, and we'll certainly be keeping an eye on it as things uh, progress. Uh, thanks for watching the video. I say this is the Sandbox Daily, where we are um, delving deep into what's going on with the Sandbox and waiting for it to uh, launch. Um, but please subscribe to the channel if you're interested in this sort of stuff. Uh, but thanks for watching, and see you again soon.